this video is the next in a series looking at the AQA A-level chemistry topic of transition metals. This video is about oxidation states, so we talk about how transition metals have multiple stable oxidation states, and then in particular look at two key examples, the oxidation states of vanadium and also the silver mirror test with Tollins reagent. One of the characteristic properties of the transition metals is that they have multiple stable oxidation states. Now you should be quite familiar with the idea of oxidation states or oxidation numbers from your AS chemistry, but if you need a little refresher then there is a series of six videos all about redox chemistry that are worth having another look at. So just as a quick refresher, when we say an oxidation state we mean it's a number that represents the number of electrons that are lost or gained by an atom of an element in a compound. So in some reactions it's really obvious what's been oxidised and what's been reduced, but in others we need to do a little bit of figuring out. And oxidation states are a way of numerically doing that. So in practice we don't count the electrons, we just learn some rules. The first rule is that where you have an element the oxidation state is always zero, although that's not particularly relevant when we're talking about transition metals. The second is that where you've got a neutral compound, the oxidation states are going to add up to be zero. And if you've got a compound iron rather than a neutral compound, so a few atoms are bonded together and then there's a, a charge over the whole ion, then in that case the sum of the oxidation states will be the same as the charge on the iron. And then finally, in order to help us work this out, there are some elements that have standard oxidation states. When working out oxidation states, you're always going to work from the most electronegative element to the least electronegative element. Now, there are more rules than this, but I've missed out all of the ones that don't apply when we're talking about transition metals. So if you need the full set of rules, go look at the redox videos. So in terms of transition metals, fluorine is always going to have an oxidation state of minus one. Oxygen will be minus two. Chlorine will be minus one and hydrogen is plus one unless it's in a metal hydride. So actually we can ignore that plus one because if hydrogen bonds to a transition metal, it's going to be minus one instead. Here are some examples of the variable oxidation states of some of the transition metals in the fourth period of the periodic table. It's interesting to note that whereas vanadium, like titanium, produces stable three plus ions and is far less stable as a two plus ion, as we move left to right across the period, the plus two oxidation state becomes comparatively more stable, while the plus three becomes less stable. So there's kind of a general tendency for transition metals on the right hand side of that D block to form plus two ions. Another thing that's interesting to note is how these species respond electrochemically. So um, basically, the higher the oxidation state is, the more that species is likely to have a tendency to be an oxidising agent. So the classic example of this um, are manganate ions, which contain manganese with a plus seven oxidation state, which is a really, really good oxidising agent. Whereas other species that have a much lower oxidation state are far more likely to be good reducing agents. For this part of the course, AQA expects you to know about two key examples in a bit more detail. And the first one is the oxidation states of vanadium. Now, we know that transition metals often have multiple stable oxidation states, but vanadium is relatively unique in that it has four stable oxidation states, and each one has a particular characteristic colour when the ions are in solution. The first thing it's worth you paying attention to is making sure that you're comfortable with why the oxidation state is what it is in each one of these ions. So the plus three and the plus two are fairly obvious because they're just monatomic ions. But let's look at these other two. So we've just said that the oxidation state of oxygen is always going to be minus two if it's bonded to a transition metal. And this first ion here has two oxygen atoms in it. So that makes minus four in total. And then the overall charge of the ion is a single plus. So we need five pluses to balance out that minus four and the plus here. And so that's why we've got plus five here. And then in our second ion, we've only got one oxygen atom, which still has an oxidation state of minus two. So whatever the oxidation state of this vanadium atom here is, it has to balance out that minus two and give us enough positivity to get to two plus here. And that's why it's going to be plus four. Now, as you can see, we have these characteristic colors for these different ions. So um, where you start off and you have um, these, these first ions, these um, vanadate ions with an oxidation state of plus five, then they make solutions bright yellow. And then as, um, as that's reduced down to a plus four, the solution goes blue. Now, if you've actually done this practically, you may not have seen that blue colour because what tends to happen is some of the vanadium is reduced and you get the blue colour, but there's still some residual yellow colour there. So quite often you just see it go 
a kind of greeny colour and people end up thinking that the first colour change is from yellow to green but it's not it's yellow to blue it's just that there's still some yellow stuff left behind um, but it is possible to stop that reaction like we've done here so that you can see those colour changes more clearly then if the zinc carries on reducing those um, those vanadium atoms then we're going to end up uh, with the first monatomic iron with a oxidation state of plus three and that is green in colour and then finally we have this really nice violet colour for vanadium with an oxidation state of plus two each one of these reduction processes you need to be able to write an equation describing what's happening now again if you're feeling a little bit rusty with half equations there is a whole video on doing those it's part of the redox series we're just going to go through these really really quickly the three that you need to know for the reduction of vanadium ions so to start with we've got these um, vanadate ions over here on the left with an oxidation state of plus five and then um, on the right we've got the other vanadium containing iron which has an oxidation state of plus four or the vanadium inside it does and as you know the first step in balancing a half equation is to check that we have the same number of atoms of the element that is changing oxidation state so here it's vanadium and yes I've got one on each side so that's easy and then I can start looking at this oxygen I've obviously got an additional oxygen on the left but I'm not allowed to just add oxygen that's not something I can do with half equations what I can do is add water so I add a water molecule to the right unfortunately that doesn't just come with oxygen it also contributes to hydrogen atoms so I counterbalance that by adding two hydrogen ions on the left now if you remember we said that this reduction of vanadium required zinc and then it also required acidic conditions and this is why because in order for this first step to happen and actually the second step as well um, you need hydrogen ions and hydrogen ions of course make the solution acidic now finally I need to balance out the electrons so I'm going from an oxidation state of plus five to one of plus four and so I'm going to need an electron here if we're going to write a full equation rather than just a half equation then we also need to take account of what's happening to the zinc so while the vanadium is being reduced the zinc is being oxidized and it's losing two electrons because the stable ion of zinc is zinc two plus now in order to mash these two half equations together and make them into a full equation the electrons need to balance which right now they don't so what I need to do is take this top equation and multiply the whole thing by two so then I've got two electrons on the left from the top equation and two electrons on the right from the bottom equation and I can just cancel those out so if I now mash these two equations these two half equations together I get um, zinc with two vanadate ions and four hydrogen ions turning to zinc two plus ions uh, with two more of these um, vanadium containing ions and two water molecules the next part of the reduction process is very very similar so again I've got a single atom of vanadium on either side of my equation and the one on the right is in this monatomic iron which obviously has an oxidation state of plus three because you know it's just a vanadium iron and then over here on the left I've got vanadium with an oxidation state of plus four and again I've got um, an oxygen atom on the left so I balance that out by adding a water molecule to the right and then two hydrogen ions to the left so again this needs to be done under acidic conditions and then I balance my electrons and then again if I add in zinc then I'm going to see that I'm going to need to double my top equation in order to make those electrons balance so I end up with an overall equation that looks a little bit like this so you can work these out you don't really need to memorize them as long as you're confident with how to write half equations and then in my final stage I've got a really really easy half equation because I've just got these two monatomic ions so all I need to do to balance it out is to add an electron and then again when zinc gets involved I need to double that top equation so that I can balance out the electrons and I'm left with this overall so to recap the oxidation states of vanadium you've got a first color change going from yellow to blue and that happens when the oxidation state changes from plus five to plus four then that blue turns to green as it turns from plus four to plus three and then the green turns from violet as the oxidation state changes from plus three to plus two an exam question might ask you something like acidified ammonium metavanidate reacts with zinc explain how your observations show that vanadium exists in multiple oxidation states so what we want to say is that we can see these color changes there are multiple colors of solution and that's because each color of solution is dependent on a different oxidation state of the metal you might wonder what would cause an oxidation state change in a transition metal and as we've already hinted sometimes reaction conditions can play a role so as we saw in this reduction of vanadium 
you need these hydrogen ions in order for that reduction to occur. And that's very often the case. This isn't a hard and fast rule. It's not perfect. And as we said, there are some oxidation state changes that will happen independently of reaction conditions. But generally speaking, acidic conditions are going to favour reduction. And then funnily enough, given that they're reverse processes, oxidation is going to be favoured by alkaline conditions. So as we change the pH, it's going to affect the position of the equilibrium. So if I've got some um, hydrogen ions I'm going to add in to this, um, this equilibrium mixture that I have here, then obviously Le Chatelier's principle says that that's going to push the equilibrium over towards the right hand side. It's going to favour the forward reaction and therefore we're going to have more of the right hand ions being produced. Whereas if I added um, an alkali, then that would react with the hydrogen ions and remove them from the solution and that would then push the equilibrium back towards the right hand side. The position of that equilibrium can also be affected by the ligand that is interacting with this ion. So we're kind of simplifying things a little bit here. When we talk about a vanadium 2 plus or a vanadium 3 plus ion, they're actually not really going to hang around as those single monatomic ions. They're going to be part of complexes like we've seen in earlier videos when we looked at copper and iron 2 and 3 plus and also cobalt. The next reaction that you need to be aware of for this part of the specification is the use of Tollins reagent to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. And this is a reaction that you would have met during your year 12 organic chemistry. So to make this, um, this Tollins reagent, we take some silver nitrate solution and add a tiny amount of sodium hydroxide, which is going to make it slightly alkaline. And that's going to cause a precipitate of silver oxide. And then you add enough dilute ammonia to redissolve that precipitate and you make this diamine silver ion. Now, because the solution is alkaline, it's possible for this aldehyde here to be further oxidized to make a carboxylic acid, or at least to make a salt of the carboxylic acid. And that doesn't happen if you've got a ketone because it can't be oxidized any further. So as the aldehyde becomes oxidized to make the carboxylic acid, then the silver is going to be reduced. It's going to pick up an electron. And rather than being a silver ion, we're going to have atomic silver, which is obviously then not soluble. And so it sort of precipitates out and we get this lovely silver mirror over here. I hope that was a useful summary of this topic. We do still need to talk about redox titrations, but because that's also quite a big topic, I'm going to put it in a separate video so we can also include a lot of calculations. So don't forget to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out.